Well, hi everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to Formula One, how to start your network marketing business right. I've been involved in the network marketing profession for over 25 years and had a lot of success in this business. And one of the things I love about network marketing so much are the people involved, people like yourself, people who have decided that you wanna have more out of your life, more from this business, more for your families, you want to be able to live a bigger life. So what I want to do in this product with you, this experience with you, is kind of mentally trick yourself for a minute and pretend we're sitting in your kitchen or in your living room or in your office somewhere and we're having a conversation about how to start your network marketing business. And whether you're brand new and just ready to get started or you've maybe been around before or tried it before and you want to restart your business, that's what I want this feeling to be. And I want you to be able to go back to this. If, if maybe you start and you stumble a little bit, come back to this to be able to watch it again and again and again and start to kind of build new muscles in this new profession. It's going to be great, okay? So we're going to have a good time doing this. Uh, it won't be too long and overbearing, but what I want to share with you is everything that I wish someone shared with me. When I first got started, I was walking around in a fog. I was looking for answers everywhere. And, and what I'm gonna share with you in, in the time that we have together in this product is what I wish everyone would have shared with me. The things that I've learned over the course of these 25 years to be able to help a person to start. Because what I've learned is if you start right, you can save yourself so much challenge and anguish and grief because if you go through the school of hard knocks kind of unnecessarily for the next couple of years, I'd rather save you from that pain. So let's get started. And as we start, the first thing I want to do is congratulate you. The fact that you've made a decision to do something different in network marketing. You're the smart one. You're the people who are escaping the matrix and walking away from uh, an economy and a system that's broken. You're the one that realized this is a better way. Network marketing at least has the potential of being a better way. So the fact that you're facing your fears, the fact that you understand that entrepreneurialism is for you and network marketing being the best form of entrepreneurialism gives you the best chance for success, that's um, something that I admire. That's why I'm your biggest fan and I'm in your corner. So congratulations on facing your fear. And, and taking that step. I wanna personally walk through this process with you. I, this is less of a how-to um, uh, uh, training program and more of a conversation on how we can work together to help you achieve your goals in network marketing to, to do it fast. So as we start off, let me ask you some questions. What do you want? What do you want out of your network marketing career? Now, I understand Probably for most of you, uh, what you really want right now is you want to get your investment back. You want to, whatever you put into your business to start your business, you want to be able to get that back, get a little bit of success, maybe get a little bit into profit and see what happens. That's what 99% of people who join, they join and they just want to let, yeah, sure, I'm going to give it a try and we'll see what happens. So, you know, their biggest desire at the beginning, get their money back, get into profit, and then see what happens. But what I've learned over the years, and I'm not gonna push you for, for um, hardcore answers. I find that sometimes pushing people for their reasons, why are you doing this, why are you involved in business, sometimes pushing you a little bit too hard is uh, like asking a 17-year-old what they're gonna do with the rest of their life. You know, they're like, I, uh, I don't know, and, you know, and stop asking me so much, stop pushing me so hard. But, what I will tell you is this, reasons ultimately drive everything. Your reasons for being involved in network marketing, they drive everything. Uh, they'll, they'll push you through the pain. They'll, they'll cause you to act when maybe you wouldn't have acted. They'll cause you to, to maybe face your fears sometimes. And what I've learned is strong reasons, if you have strong reasons, you, you really want to make something happen, you want to prove something to somebody else, you want to, to uh, retire that spouse, you want to figure out 
you, you want to do something bigger for your life, you're tired of crawling through life, those strong reasons are really, really important. If you have weak reasons, sometimes it's not enough to drive you. You know, it's the reason why I wish more network marketing companies had higher uh, price points to start. Because if you had to put $5,000, or let's say you had to put $50,000 or $100,000 into your business, but you would get that $100,000 back if you went out there and brought five people into your business as a distributors and maybe 10 customers. We'll give you that $100,000 back. Well, that would be strong reasons, right? Those, you know, like, whoa, you know, if I just go get 10 customers and sign up five distributors, I get $100,000 back? Okay, I'm going to go do that. But sometimes, uh, because network marketing, the price of entry is so low, the reasons are also kind of low. Uh, so try to, to uh, get a clear picture in your mind is why you're doing this. I understand at the beginning it's going to be, you know, let's see what happens, but understand why you're doing this. Get a clear picture. So that's question number one is what do you want? What do you want? And think about that and write it down. What do I want? If money was no object, what, do I, what would I want to do with my life? And some of it's going to be just tangible things. Uh, maybe it's stuff that you want. Maybe you want a nicer house. Maybe you want a nicer car. Maybe you want to put your kids into a better school. Maybe you want to have better clothes. Maybe you want to go on vacation where you want to instead of where you have to settle for. That's one list. Another list is um, who are the people that you want to um, impress in some way? You know, for me, there were some people that didn't really think very much of me. And I wanted to show them that, that they were wrong about me. I wanted to make my parents proud. I wanted to um, make the people that I looked up to kind of admire and respect what it, what it is that I was involved in. So I, I worked hard for that too. But a third list is, is the things that you can do with success. Helping other people, giving to causes that are important to you, right? Showing your kids that an entrepreneurial path is a great path. There's a lot of different things that you can do in, uh, in those reasons. So spend some time thinking about the reasons of why you're doing this. Answer the question, why are you involved and why are you doing this? Uh, what do you want out of your business? Question number two is what are you willing to give up in order to get it? What are you willing to give up? Because, see, if, if the reasons, again, we're back to reasons. If the reasons are strong, you'll give up some things that might be holding you back. See, if, when you think about the things that you would, you would potentially need to give up, you might need to give up some time. You might need to be, you know, work part-time on your career or full-time on your career and part-time on your future in network marketing. But you might have to think about, okay, I've got to carve out 10 hours a week. How am I going to do that? Or 20 hours or whatever the amount of time that you're going to want to sacrifice into building your future. Think about the time that you're willing to invest in order to get what you want. And again, if the reasons are strong, you'll figure out the time. Second is money. It's going to cost you a little bit of money to get started and to do it right. You know, there's the, the, the third thing that you might want to think about as far as what to give up, at least for the time being, is some hobbies. You might be spending a lot of time on a few hobbies that aren't taking you in the direction of your dreams necessarily. You might need to put those hobbies on hold while you create a new income stream for your life and for your family. Another area is recreation. A lot of us, you know, you might be really into sports. You might be really into one thing or another. You gotta think about, are the things that I'm doing with my life taking me in the direction of my dreams or not? And can I, for a season, put them aside and focus on the effort necessary to get my business started properly, okay? So time, money, hobbies, recreation. I would also tell you is one of the things you might wanna give up in order to get what you want is some bad habits. Maybe you have a habit of putting in the minimum at work and coming home after work and turning off completely. Maybe you have a habit of going out with your friends all the time and hanging out socially all the time, wasting 
days and hours and weeks. Maybe that's a habit um, that you have in your life. Maybe you have a habit of procrastination. Maybe you have a habit of blaming other people for your challenges. Maybe you have a habit of sitting back and making and, and waiting for somebody else to tell you what to do versus taking initiative in your business. Think about the habits that you have in your life and say, maybe I'm willing to sacrifice some of those habits in order to be able to create a better future. So question number one is what do you want? Question number two is what are you willing to give up in order to get it? Um, next thing I'd like to talk to you about is taking responsibility. I want you to understand something. One of my mentors sat me down and actually, um, his name was Michael Nelson, and he was, when I, I started building in, in network marketing in the Minneapolis, Twin Cities area, Minneapolis City Hall in Minnesota. And I was having moderate success. And Michael Nelson started building in that town, and he quickly became the go-to guy in that town. And I found out that he sat down and got a person started exactly the same every single time. And I sat down and, and, and uh, started to model some of his uh, philosophies. And here's one of the biggest ones. He would sit a person down, and just like I'm sitting down with you, and he would say, listen, guess what? Success is up to you. If you succeed in this business, it's gonna be because you made a decision to make everything happen. And also, failure's up to you. If you fail in this business, guess what? It's not gonna be on me. Even though I'm the person that brought you in, failure's also up to you. You're gonna decide, ultimately, whether you succeed or you fail. That, you know, you might think of me as uh, responsible for you because I, I signed you up, I was your sponsor in network marketing, but that's not true. I was a connector, I connected you to the company, I'm happy to be a resource, but success or failure is up to you. I will tell you one thing, I'm acting kind of as your, uh, as your friend in this business, virtually, through this product, acting kind of as a sponsor, as, a, as, a, as your unofficial upline in this business. And it's the same kind of thing is, is I'm here to help, but I'm not here to do it for you. I'm not gonna work and, and do your work for you. I'm not gonna get you out of bed every morning. I'm not gonna motivate you every day. I'm not gonna call you and tell you if you use the products. I'm not going to call you and I'm going to say, are you coming? You're going to be on the calls. You're going to be at the meetings. I'm here to connect you to those things. And I promise you, if you ask questions, I'll give you answers. Okay. Now I will give you a secret at this part of the, of the program. Let me give you a secret. The secret is this. Most of the top earners in network marketing didn't have a very good upline. They didn't have somebody helping them, holding their hand all the time. Uh, solving problems for them, doing all the presentations for them, that person that they could really latch arms with, what's real, here's the real truth. If you have an upline that does everything for you, you don't have to become much. You don't have to become much. You could just kind of sit back and let them do all the work for you. Drag a few people and put them in front of them. You don't have to become a good leader you don't, because they're a good leader. You don't have to become a good presenter because they do all the presentations. You don't have to you know, get good at sitting down and showing somebody the opportunity because they'll help you do all that stuff. And if they help you long enough, they make you dependent. And that's the last thing that we want you to become. See, here's an upline's job. My job working with you today is this. I want to help you become independent as quickly as possible. I want you to become self-sufficient as quickly as possible. I want you to have the ability to get answers to any problem, any question, as quickly as possible. And see, that's the difference between successful people and not successful people. The successful people in network marketing, they make it a choice to become independent. They say goodbye to their upline. They don't like stiff arm them or anything. They just say, yo, listen, thank you for introducing me to this opportunity. I really appreciate it. I found a good path. I may use you as a resource, but I don't need you. I'm not going to blame you for success, for your, for my success or failure. I'm taking responsibility. I'm going to make it happen.
okay? I understand my job is to become independent as quickly as possible, and that's gonna be my focus. I may come to you to help me become independent, but I'm not gonna come and try and pass on all my problems to you, Mr. and Mrs. Upwon, okay? So that might be a different mindset, right? To be thinking about, wow, Eric's telling me that I need to become independent, you know, success or failure is up to me. Okay, that's different. Because a lot of times people will tell you, oh, just come in my business and I'll do everything for you. It's one of the worst things you could say because it sets up a really bad dynamic. I want you to be independent. I want you to be strong. I want you to be powerful. I want you to be unstoppable. I want you to be fearless, right? That's what I want for you. Now, one thing in this kind of uh, becoming independent, uh, your upline may or may not be a good support system for you. It really doesn't matter. If they are, fantastic. If they're not, that's just, just fine anyway. You got introduced to a great opportunity that you can use. But one of the things that I found that, that's helped and will help you is find a workout partner to hold you accountable. You ever have a workout partner, you're working out, and you're, you know, you're pushing each other. When they're having a bad day, you're, you're motivating them. When you're having a bad day, they motivate you. If you have a workout partner sometimes in network marketing, it can help. And sometimes it might be somebody you met at the meeting. It might not be somebody in your upline or downline even. It might be somebody cross line to you, somebody else that lives in your area or somebody you respect. Find a workout partner to hold you accountable. I've had several workout partners, and they're so great. They're, they're, they're um, very, very helpful. And again, like I say, it's not dependent on upline or downline. You can find them anywhere in your company. But find somebody that you relate to, that motivates you, that you can motivate them, that you can, you can kind of call, hey, BS on you, man. You said that you were going to do this, and you, you didn't do it. Or the person says, well, I'm working really hard. And you say, why do you, even, why do you lie like that? Because you're not working very hard. I know you're not working hard. You're kind of going through the motions, and you, when you talk all week long, you're not working hard. Somebody will call you when you're – not being truthful to yourself or to others, they'll just say, you know, hey, come on, let's drop down to 20 more push-ups. You know, let's go make 10 more phone calls. Let's go challenge each other to do something. So find a workout partner. I think that'll help you, okay? So the uh, uh, taking responsibility is a big, big piece. The next piece that's really important are the expectations in network marketing, the emotions of network marketing. And if you're just getting started, if you're, if you're restarting your business, you already know all, know all about the emotions. But if you're just getting started, um, it's gonna surprise you because most business is not emotional. You go to a job, they tell you what to do, there's not a lot of crazy ups and downs, but it's, it's kind of follow the path and do what you're told, Fit into the culture of wherever you are, and everything will be fine. Um, if you've been entrepreneurial before, you know about the ups and downs of starting your own business or being involved in sales or dealing with the economy changing or uh, company changing your territory, changing your commissions, those types of things. This network marketing is a very emotional business. There will be ups and downs. I promise you. Life by itself, it's just gonna distract you. As soon as you say, you know what, I'm gonna go all the way to the top in network marketing. Life is gonna say, oh really? Let's see if they're serious. And you're gonna get all kinds of distractions are gonna get thrown at you. You can say, okay, I'm gonna carve out 20 hours a week for my future. And as soon as you do that, it seems like the, the universe throws everything it can at you to see if you're serious. So life's going to throw stuff in your way to try and get you back into that daily grind, right? You're going to face rejection by ignorant people. I need, I need you to understand something. When you're going out there, we're going to talk about this a little bit more. When you go out there and you talk to people about network marketing being a better way for them or their family to being able to live a better life, most people are completely ignorant to network marketing. They think they understand it, but they don't understand it. They think that they get it, but they don't get it. What they have is a mostly, like 95% misconception of network marketing. They think everybody at the top makes the money, 
If you get in early enough, you can you can uh, uh, make a lot of money off the rest of the suckers in the business. That you have to alienate your family and friends. That you have to push inferior products. They think all these crazy things that aren't real. So because of that, when you go to them and say, "Listen, I, I've got a better way," especially if you do it wrong. And now you're you're in this program, so I'm going to help you do it right, especially from day one. So you don't have to deal with that. I, I'll show you exactly how to kind of um, manage the process with friends and family. Um, but even so, no matter what you do, some people are going to have strong opinions because maybe they were involved before and it didn't work out, or they know somebody that tried it and blamed everything else and didn't take responsibility, or they've heard something from somewhere. And because of that, or they just say, you know, look, I'm busy. I'm, you know, I, I, I can't afford any other distractions. Or they reject you because you haven't been successful enough in life or whatever. Sometimes people are mean. Not a lot of them. But I, I will show you how to minimize that. I promise you. But there's going to be some rejection from ignorant people. And also, when you bring people into your business, so, so let's say you, you join your network marketing business and you're on an all-time high. Everything's great. You talk to a couple people and people are generally positive, you're on an all-time high. This is great. And then you get that first ounce of rejection, boom, down it goes. Like, oh, man, that wasn't fun. That wasn't uh, rewarding. That wasn't encouraging. But you keep talking, then somebody joins your business. Oh, my gosh, and now you got a team and things are going. And then that person quits your business for whatever reason. Maybe they faced rejection that one time, and they quit because of it. Okay? So... They quit, and then but you're either going to fight or quit yourself, and then you're going to build again. See, I want you to understand something. Um, when you join, when you join network marketing, part of the ups and downs is your past will either punish you or reward you at the beginning. And here's what I mean by that: if you've started, if you've lived a good life, and what I mean by that, if you've been a giver. If you've been um, helpful to other people, if you've been a blessing to other people, if you've been a good friend to other people, those people are going to naturally take a look at what you have. But if you've been a taker your whole life, a lot of people are going to give you a lot of resistance because all of a sudden you're showing up and interested in their life. And here's why I know that you get punished for being a taker, you get rewarded for being a giver. When I first got started, I was 23 years old, and up until that point, I was primarily a taker. And I didn't have any success in my life, in my business, and because of that, people were very skeptical of my all of a sudden interest in their life. Um, what I will tell you is if you've been a taker, here's the good news. You can turn that all around. One, you can approach people with a respectful, and um, thoughtful invitation that I'll talk to you about. Two, you can start to be a giver. One of the things that network marketing helped me become is a giver. Somebody who gives. If you watch networkmarketingpro.com at all, um, there's old, well over a thousand free videos that I've given to the profession without asking for a dollar in exchange. You know, that you can go watch it to your heart's content. Why would I do that? Because I've learned the incredible benefits in life from giving. So understand, if, you, if you're past, you were a taker, you're, you're going to get some resistance at the beginning, but you can become a giver and you can be thoughtful in how you approach people. You're, if you've been a, a giver your whole life, you're going to get rewarded. More people are going to take a look. But either way, you can, both of you need to uh, realize that there are both of those types of people in the world. So give me an example. Let's say you're a giver. You've been a giver for forever. you talk talked to everybody, and they join. But some of the people that joined weren't givers. They were takers. And they struggle. And they, they don't understand why everybody doesn't take a look like everybody took a look when you shared it with them. And the reason is, and you have to explain it to them, is they've got to shift the mindset into becoming more of a citizen of the world, more of a giver and less of a taker. And they need to be very thoughtful and careful with their approach to people and respectful with their approach to people in order to be able to get results. Okay? So 
I hope that helps you. Just understanding there's going to be ups and downs and coming up with some mechanisms to realize when you're down and how to deal with it uh, will help you a lot. Let's talk about how to get involved. Let's talk about how you need to get involved in your business. Now, I know most of you have probably already signed up, but I want you to, to, to uh, think about something for a moment. Um, you know, if I'm sitting down with you right now inside of your company, uh, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is commit yourself to doing this right. Your story of how you get involved is really important. Your story of how you get involved. So if, you could, if you're committed or if you're just dipping a toe in the water, are you just, just trying it or are you really serious? Um, sometimes companies have different packages to kind of for different commitment levels. I would encourage you, the strongest possible encouragement I can give you is, even if you haven't done it already, get yourself to the top possible package, the highest package possible. And I, I'm going to tell you a number of reasons why. Okay? Reason number one is, there, I'm, I'm certain that there are benefits to having that package. Maybe you have more product, maybe you have more flexibility, maybe you have different parts of the compensation plan that open up. There's, I'm certain there are some pieces that will bring you benefit. If you're a product-based company, there's gonna be extra product for you to be able to use inside that company. If you're a service-based company, I'm sure that there are other benefits that will be part of that package. But the top possible package for the benefits that will come with the package, that's number one. Number two is, you're going to be telling your story of how you got started for the rest of your career. Which story do you think will make more money? When people say, hey, well, what package did you pick? You have an answer to give them. The lowest possible or the highest possible or something in between. Which story would you like to see duplicated through your organization? See, if you're, if you're going to do this anyway, why not? I mean, this isn't like starting a traditional business for crying out loud. It's not very much money. You don't have to create logos and you don't have to hire legal teams and you don't have to sign long-term leases and do all this other kind of stuff. But you might as well get the most leverage you can get and tell the best story possible that you can tell in order to be able to create the best organization. Where, where do you want to have everybody in your whole organization? Let's assume for a second, let's assume success and say, five years from now, or two years from now, or a year from now, you have a thousand people in your organization. Which package would you, if you could wave a magic wand and everybody in the group has one particular package, which package would you want them to have? The top one, right? So it starts with you. If you're not committed to doing it, if you're just gonna test the water, then how do you expect them to make a higher commitment than you're gonna make? So top possible package, very important. Next is the monthly commitment. Whether it's uh, an auto ship requirement or some sort of product commitment on a monthly basis, make sure that's solid. Make sure that's something that you want to see duplicated everywhere in your organization, right? So get committed. Get committed with the package. Get committed with the monthly commitment. Also, the other thing I would tell you to do in this particular aspect is introduce yourself to everyone. One of the things that really helped me a lot get started, I went to my first convention and I just made a decision that I was gonna introduce myself to every single person at that convention. I just wanted to get known and I didn't even know kind of mentally why I was doing it, but I can't tell you how much good that did me. When I got to know every, I shook everybody's hands, I got all their business cards, uh, I became friends with many of them, and when the going got tough, I had my friends to go talk to. I mean, if you, if you go to church, for example, there's a couple different kinds of church experiences, right? One kind of church experience is you just go sit quietly. You never meet anybody. You never talk to anybody. You go attend, and then you leave right away. Second kind is you go, and you get to know everybody. And now there's a community, and you feel a sense of connection. Pardon me a sense of connection, a sense of um, involvement. And then the third 
level would be maybe you even volunteer in some parts of the of the church and now you're connected on a completely different level so if there's ever any doubts you have a community to go to to be able to talk about how to succeed in life how to succeed in that particular situation the same thing's true in network marketing if you will connect yourself and um, make friends inside your company those friendships will serve you so tremendously well because sometimes you don't want to hear what your upline has to say because they have a financial commitment or, or, or a financial interest in your success or failure but if you have a friend in the business that's not necessarily tied to you financially, sometimes you can call them and say, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me with that? The more friends you make, the better. So go to your local event. Shake everybody's hands. Get their contact information. Friend them up on Facebook. Connect with them on Twitter. Whatever it is. Start to follow their life. Start to see what's going on. Start to surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, that will serve you tremendously well as you start your business. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, uh, I'm enjoying being able to, to share it with you. And when you're getting value in this, what I want you to be thinking about, one, is how you're going to use what I'm sharing with you for your own benefit. And two, how you're going to pass this information on to the next person. And you have a couple ways that you can do that. You could pass it on directly by taking notes with everything that we're talking about and sitting down with the person going through it personally. Or you can connect them with me through, through this product. Same, same thing as you're attending. The people that you're getting involved, uh, you can connect with me. And I'll go through this the same way as I'm going through it with you, okay? So I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to be your kind of virtual friend uh, in, in this process. All right, let's take a minute and talk about some business stuff, some items that you need to think about as you're starting a business. Because what most people don't understand is the act of starting your own business just by itself. If you don't already own a business and you start a network marketing business, the amount of tax benefits are enormous. But you need to think about some things as you start, okay? Uh, one, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not advising you in any direction. But what I will tell you is if you talk to your tax professional and you think about this, you can really uh, see some tremendous benefits. I will tell you right now, if you just got involved, use your products throughout the year, uh, in almost every case, I'm not going to say every single case, but in almost every case that I'm aware of, your products will essentially be free. Your expenses on starting your business will essentially be free because of the tax benefits that you'll enjoy just by starting your own business. So there's some things you need to think about with that. One, track expenses. What are the expenses that you're using for your business? Make sure that you track those, okay? And save those receipts, take care of all that stuff. Keep good accounts. Um, if, you, if you want to, you don't have to do this right away, but if you wanted to, to open up uh, a new credit card just for your business or a new uh, checking account with maybe a debit card, credit card, just for your business, keep all of those business expenses together. Keep good accounts. The next thing I will tell you is in almost every case in network marketing, you're treated as an independent contractor. In other words, it's your job to save for taxes. It's not somebody else's job to withhold the taxes. All that money you get in a check isn't all yours to keep. Some is going to be due to the government in the form of taxes. So find out from your tax advisor how much you should be taking out of every single check as an estimate to make sure that you have ready at any moment enough to be able to pay your taxes on your network marketing income. And I'm gonna give you one more piece of advice on uh, when it comes to kind of your future and your network marketing money. If you have the ability, I would encourage you strongly to not spend your network marketing money. Don't spend it. Have that be your future. Have that be your retirement. Have that be your uh, your your uh, retire your spouse fund. Have that be something else. Try not to spend your network marketing money because imagine, let's say you have enough to pay the bills with your job, your quote unquote job that you have today. 
Say that you have that. And you start building a network marketing income and you don't spend it. You're just building it and it becomes, goes into investments and it goes into retirement and it goes into college funds. It goes into all these different things to expand your life versus spending it all, 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 spending it all. You know, which would you rather have? If you have the ability to do it anyway, you probably don't need to spend it all right this second. A lot of us in the world today are, are addicted to instant gratification. As soon as we get an extra nickel, it's burning a hole in our pocket and we want to spend it all. Again, maybe take your full-time job, because most of you are part-time in network marketing. If you're part-time in network marketing, take your full-time income from your job and use that to pay the bills. Take your part-time income from network marketing and use that to create your future. Imagine five years down the road and you, let's say you, all you made was $100,000, $20,000 a year for the next five years. But you now had $100,000 in the bank, earning interest or in investments, earning a return on the investment, or maybe in a piece of property, earning cash flow from a piece of property. That would be pretty cool. What if over 10 years you were moderately successful and you were making $100,000 a year, let's say, in network marketing over 10 years. That's a million bucks. Now you can, 10 years from now, you could either have made a million dollars and have spent every penny, or you could have had your income and earned an extra million dollars and have that creating your future. It's really up to you, but after having earned a lot of money and spent a lot of money and watched a lot of successful and not so successful people go through the financial, you know, ins and outs over the course of the years, what I would prefer is that you never get behind on your taxes. What I would prefer is that you build a future, not just a cash flow life where you're broke at the end of every month and you're spending every penny and you're making obligations really, really fast, uh, faster sometimes than the income comes in. And now you're on the treadmill instead of getting freedom. I think the greatest uh, status symbol in the world today it's not a car, it's not a cool watch, it's not jewelry, uh, it's not even a fancy house. You know what it is? Debt free. Imagine if you just use your network marketing money to become debt free. You didn't use it to buy anything else, you just used it to get free. Take the chains off, let them drop. What if that was all you did, for most of you that have debt right now, some of you have student loans. Some of you have credit card debt. Some of you have a mortgage that's choking you. Some of you have obligations that are killing you and a car notes that are killing you. What if you could just use your network marketing money to get out of debt? Wouldn't that be cool to be free like that and have choices and options like that? That's what most people dream of. That's a status symbol, and that's what I would want for you. All right, let's talk about, now that we kind of, set the stage in all these different directions. Let's talk about getting your business going. How are we gonna get you started? How are we gonna help you um, get some results as quickly as possible? One of the first things I would recommend that you do is make your list. Create what I call an active candidate list. And I'm gonna provide a link here to what I call the Ultimate Memory Jogger Workbook. And you can, Get this Ultimate Memory Jogger Workbook and uh, fill that in. It'll give you about something like 700 different categories to kind of jog your memory and, and have you think about the people that you know. And when you're going through this, you're gonna be going through your Facebook friends, you're gonna be going through your phone, you're gonna be going through your, your email um, contacts list, and you're gonna be just creating as many people as you can put onto that list. And then we're gonna figure out a game plan to being able to teach you how to invite those people to take a look at your products and take a look at your opportunity, okay? So this is part of the work that we do in network marketing. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed because why, the reason why I call it an active candidate list is you're gonna to start today, I hope. I hope that you start today. Even if you haven't downloaded or got the, the, the Ultimate Memory Jogger Workbook in front of you at the moment, if you just start with a piece of paper today, you pause this program and you start making names. You start writing down names. You start writing, 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 writing. Grab your phone, start writing, 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 writing. 
Well, all I want you to do, the reason why I say active candidate list, is every day I want you to add a few more to that list. Develop a new muscle of every day. Try and add two more people. Try and add two more people. Try and add two more people. Over the course of a year, that's 700 more people. Over the course of five years, it's 3,500 people. And it's a muscle that top earners learn to do in network marketing. And inside of that Ultimate Memory Jogger workbook, you're going to see some different lists. I want you to think about who would be some of the easiest customer candidates that you have. Who, would, who do you think would most easily say yes to becoming one of your customers? And why don't we start with the easiest? We don't have to start with the toughest and the hardest and the meanest and the most negative. Let's start with the most positive, the people that like us the most, the people that, that uh, care about us the most. And let's go to them thoughtfully, and I'm gonna talk about that in a moment, thoughtfully to help them become a customer, okay? Second is, who do you think would be the most likely candidates to become a distributor? What you would call the easiest potential distributors. And let's make a list of 10 or 20 of those, maybe 10 or 20 of each. 10 or 20 of customers, 10 or 20 of distributors. And, and here's, here's why I'm um, having you make this big list and then these smaller lists. The reason is I want you to have some success fast this week. I want you to have a positive experience by getting a customer. I want you to have a positive experience by getting a distributor. I want you to get a check. I want you to earn some commissions. I want you to go, oh my gosh, this can work for me. That would be really, really exciting for me and I know that if we get you off to a quick start, then maybe you'll settle in to more of a commitment to learning the skills and ultimately becoming a network marketing professional. Those early results were so important for me. The fact that I was able to actually sign someone up, make a commission, it was so exciting for me. When I first got a check, it showed up in the, in the mail. I was like, oh my gosh, this is real. This isn't just an idea now anymore. My business is actually making money. Um, so once you have made these lists, right, the next thing you need to do is invite those people to take a look. Invite those people to become a customer. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the invitation processes here. Um, what I would encourage you to do, uh, the book, Go Pro, the number one best-selling book in all of network marketing, has the seven skills to becoming a network marketer including all the scripts of different approaches. I'm going, to, I'm going to cover a few of them today, but I, I don't have enough time to cover all of them. If you get the CDs of the GoPro book, you can listen over and over and over and, and have it work for you. If you get the book itself, you can practice. But I do have a simple script book that just gives some basic scripts that you'll get as part of this program, okay? Um, so if you have this script book, one of the things that I would like you to focus on at the beginning is what I call a support and practice approach. See, I believe that there's three different kinds of people. There's three different kinds of people on your list. There's hot market. These are your close friends and family. It's hot. I mean, it's, they know everything about you. Then there's the warm market, people that you know, people that you're aware of, they're aware of you, you, you touch face from time to time. And then there's the cold market, people you don't know yet. And our job is to kind of move people from cold into warm and, and where we can talk to them about our business. But most people start with the hot market, their close friends and family, and they do everything wrong. So let me save you some pain, okay? I want to save you some pain by telling you, please, and tell you, listen to me with a supportive and practice approach. I know most of you probably already have violated what I'm about to say because you didn't watch this before you started calling that best friend or that family member, is until you learn the support and practice approach, don't talk to anybody. Just don't do it. Just save your enthusiasm and let's, instead of like a little dog going to the bathroom all over the room because they're excited, let's take a moment and be intelligent because we want you to have success and we want you to build a long-term career. 
How many times does somebody come to you jumping up and down and say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have this business and you'd be great for it and you need to take a look at it and we have blah, 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 and they verbally bomb it on you. It's not attractive. It's not interesting. It's actually a little spooky. And sometimes we get so excited about having freedom, so excited about our chance for a future that we go a little overboard. We, and we can't believe that people said no. They just decided not to become part of our business. So here's the support and practice approach. And it's talked about in this script book, the script book that we're talking about. It's, it's listed there. It's, you know, there's a pretty specific formula for inviting someone. Step one is to tell them you're in a hurry. Listen, I don't have a lot of time. I'm running out the door. I've got to go. Step two is to compliment them. Step three is to do the invitation. And then I'm going to encourage you in just about every case at the beginning of your business to use the support and practice approach. And here's what, here's what that is. I'll role play with you for a moment. Let's say you're my brother and I call you up, my brother and my sister. And I call you up and say, hey, listen, hey, this is Eric. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. I'm running out the door, but I'm glad I caught you. I needed to talk to you. One of the things that I love about you so much is as my brother or sister, you support me. You encourage me. Even if I make mistakes, you've got my back. And that means so much to me that you love me as a brother that much that you're willing to support me. And I just got started with a business and I'm nervous. It's brand new to me. I'm just trying to figure it out. And I need someone to practice on. I need a friendly face. Can I practice with you? You know, can I, I just need somebody to just go through the motions with me. Will you, will you, would you be willing to go through the motions with me and help me practice on my new business? I'd appreciate it so much. Support and practice. Now, what's your answer going to be if I come to you with that approach? You know, if I go to my mother and father and say, you know, listen, I appreciate your support so much. Thank you, so, thank you for your support over the years. I need, I've started a new business. I need something to practice on. Can I practice with you? They're going to say, sure, come on, practice then you can go and, and you're free to make mistakes now. You can go and share your product or your opportunity with them in a practice way that doesn't have to be perfect, that lets them see the opportunity if they want to. But if they're not interested, at the end, you can say, would you support me by being one of my customers? Would you just support me by using the product? That would be great. You know, do you see an opportunity here for yourself? And you can find out if they want to do something with you. We can do it together. We can grow together. We can support each other. That would be great. But imagine if you go to all of your close friends and family with a supported practice approach, I promise you, your results will be 200, 300, 500, 1,000 percent better than going as like that blind, hungry dog in a butcher shop, you know, running around trying to get everyone. Okay? So, Inviting basics, just learn some invitation basics. You'll see that in the script book, some invitation basics. How to use a direct approach for some people, an indirect approach for some people, a super indirect approach for other people. This is something that you're gonna to need to practice a little bit. And the reason why the support and practice approach is so important at the very beginning is it doesn't require a lot of practice. You're just telling people, thanking them for their support, asking if you can practice with them, and then sharing what you have. It's really, really simple. Okay, so that's invitation basics. Next, let's talk about the launch. When you're getting ready to launch your business, you're, you're, you got the invitation basics down. What I would encourage you to do is a couple things. Number one, proclaim yourself. Tell the world that you're going to go all the way to the top. Burn your boats. Don't give yourself an out. Right? Create a situation where you go tell the world that you're gonna go, you're, you're part of this company, and you're going to go all the way to the top. And you'd appreciate all the support that anybody's willing to give you. Proclaiming yourself to the world does something. It makes it a little bit more embarrassing for you to walk away. You know, it makes you have to consider um, the social aspects both ways, of either doing it or not doing it, okay? So pro proclaiming yourself is really, really important. 
the way I like to think about it is treat it like you're opening a restaurant. If you're opening a restaurant, you'd be inviting all of your friends and family, asking them to come check out the, the, the food offerings that you have and you know, check out the ambience and atmosphere. You'd be asking them for the opening to everybody. Tell your friends, please come tell your friends. Please come support me. Some support me. We want to get this business off to a good start. Same thing's true in your network marketing business. If you're using a support and practice approach, is look, would you share this with your friends? Would you tell anybody else that might be a customer? My, the starting of my business is really, really important. I'd really, really appreciate it. So if you kind of treat this like a race, your grand opening, you know, like you really want to get going fast because you want to build some buzz and momentum. And as you're talking to your friends and family, saying, you know, listen, as much support as you can give me, I'm willing to take. You know, if you wanted to send somebody to my restaurant, I'm going to treat them really, really well. If you want to send somebody to become a customer in my network marketing company, I'm going to treat them really, really well. And I'm really going to be grateful to you for helping me launch my business properly, right? So it's like your grand opening. It's like, you know, help me launch this thing properly. See, one of the things that I want to do, I want this to accomplish for you, is I want you to get your product story fast, right? When you're using your product, I want you to have your story of what the product did for you and be able to have a fast story so you can start telling people. I want you to start getting some product sales fast. I want you to get some customers fast so you can start to tell the story. Hey, listen, I went and talked to 10 people and I got four customers or five customers. So now, and I earned X, I earned some money from doing that. I want you to start getting some new distributors signed up fast. Mostly because now you have the story you know, it's part of building a network is telling the story, right? And the story is, listen, I did this and I created this result. I, I talked to these people and, and, and I was able to uh, create some new customers. I talked to these people and I started to build a network. And I talk, helped those people do it and they started to take off. And now the more you can tell your story, see at the beginning you're going to be telling other people's stories, right? Because you just got started. Let me tell you the story of this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person inside of your company. But you want to create your story, your personal product story, your uh, customer story, and your recruiting distributor story to as many people as, as possible. And to do that, you need to create, okay? I want you to be able to get out there and get some results quickly. So let's get the low-hanging fruit. Let's get you something started because I know that once that happens, I think you're going to get a lot more uh, curious about the possibilities of the future. Let's talk about time management for a moment. A lot of people worry about how am I going to manage my time? How am I going to figure out how to do this? Because I don't have a lot of time right now. Most of you got about a network marketing going, I don't I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Because I, I don't feel like I have any time right now. How am I going to make it happen? Here's what I will tell you. A couple tips that really helped me in my career and help them millions of other people. Don't treat this like a business that you can do or not do on a, on a daily basis. Treat this like a job. Treat this like a job where you have specific hours and you have to perform in those hours. See, some people join network marketing and they kind of casual. Some days that they'll work it, some days they won't. They haven't missed a job at their, at their work, at the office, if they haven't missed a day at the office for 10 years but they get the tiniest little cold symptom and they say, well, I can't work my network marketing business today. They get the tiniest little thing that comes in their way and they go, oh, I, I can't build my network marketing business today. So what I would tell you is treat this like a job. And that's number one. Number two is the best tip that I heard on time management and network marketing is network marketing success is built in 15 minute increments. 15 minute increments. What do I mean by that? A person is busy with their life, but then they carve out 15 minutes and then they go make phone calls. They carve out 15 minutes and they follow up. They carve out 15 minutes and they sit down and show somebody the, the product or the opportunity. They carve out 15 minutes and they invite people to an event. They carve out 15 minutes at a time. And if you're gonna work 10 hours a week, that's, what is that, 40? 40, 15 minute blocks that you have in the week to be super effective. And the reason why this is such a fake out, okay, 10 hours a week, 40, 15 minute blocks, oh my gosh, is 
in real life, most people don't put in 10 hours of real work at their office. Real work. That isn't just watching the computer, looking at stuff, talking to somebody, sitting in a meeting. Unproductive. But they figured out a way to kind of hide because everybody else is hiding in the job. Now, I know that isn't everybody, and I know I'm not pointing at you, but I'm telling you, if, if it's not you, you know somebody that doesn't put in 10 hours of real work, totally focused, totally productive, get it done, work. That's what I'm saying. If you're using these 10 hours for your future, you can get a tremendous amount done in 40, 15 minute blocks. You know what I mean? You can take 15 minutes on the way to work and you can make some phone calls. You can take 15 minutes during a break in the morning, you know, schedule a break from your work. I would never say, never steal from your employer and work during work time. But if you've got a break, take 15 minutes and make some calls. If you have a lunch, that's four 15 minute blocks in an hour. Sit down with somebody over four 15 minute blocks and share an opportunity with them. Share with them what, what you have going on or make phone calls or follow ups or whatever. Breaks in the afternoon, on the way home, driving again, right? There's all this space in there. Put the, you know, get the kids, have dinner, take a 15 minute block and do what you need to do. Maybe put the kids to bed, a couple, two or three 15 minute blocks. And pretty soon you start to develop a daily method of operation, a daily routine that starts to emerge that gives you um, movement, results, activity, encouragement, right, income, all of those things are created by your daily method of operation, what you do on a daily basis. All of us in our daily time um, have, are, are a slave to our habits, right, whether they're good habits or bad habits. What I would encourage you to do is become a slave to good habits. Replace some bad habits with good ones. If you've been a procrastinator, if, if you let things steal your time, Become a person that doesn't allow any, any, any of their time stolen. If you become a slave to your television, decide to become, a, to develop a habit of no television or very limited television. If you become a person that's addicted to the internet and cannot uh, function without surfing your Facebook page for two or three hours a day, understand where that's taking you or where it may not be taking you. Some of you are slaves to your email inbox. You, know, you don't have to constantly be um, reacting to everyone else's agenda in your life. Figure out a system on a daily basis that'll help you do that. So, so that's some of the best advice I can give you in time management. The first thing I would tell you in time management is to take charge. You know, treat it like a job. 15 minute increments, right? Work through the steps of what's taking your time and what will help you build a future and decide what's important for you. Next thing I will tell you is the importance of personal development in network marketing. I can't describe to you how important this is. In the end, you only make what you are. You only earn what you become as a person. To have more, you need to become more. You need to work on yourself harder than you work on your products, harder than you work on anything else. Because in this business, unlike any other business, you are the only barrier to higher income. You're the only barrier. If you want to make more, you can become more, you can do more. If you want to do more, you need to become more. And I was forced to do this when I first got started in network marketing. You may or may not be forced to do this, but I will tell you there's some things that will help you in your personal development arena because you can hide inside your company. and You don't have to be involved in personal development at all. You can just kind of go through the motions. You can make an income. But in network marketing, you'll be exposed for human life. You need to constantly be working on yourself harder than you work on anything else. So I'm going to give you four things that will help you. One is your reading library. What are you reading? Take a few minutes every day, 15 to 30 minutes a day, and focus on reading something that will help you become better at communicating, better at leading, better at motivating, um, that will build you up and build your confidence. Your reading library is super important. And at the beginning of my career, I wasn't much of a reader. If I read five or 10 pages of a book, 
I'm going to need to be falling asleep. So the second thing was really important for me, and that was the listening library. Listening to people like Jim Rohn and Les Brown and Dennis Waitley and all these giants in personal development, you can listen to books on, on audio, right? Go, the GoPro book is a great book to listen to over and over and over on audio. You can either get it on, online on Audible or you can get it in CDs and put it onto your devices and listen to it. So what is your reading library? What are you reading on a daily basis? Leaders are readers. It's absolutely true. What are you listening to? Instead of knowing all the lyrics to every song on the radio, it might be better to, to fill your mind with great ideas from people who've gone before you. And they've taken decades of their life and they've put it into something that you can purchase for a few dollars. I mean, why wouldn't you access that and fill your mind with that and listen to that all day versus listening to talk radio or listening to, you know, top 40 or whatever it is that you listen to. So your reading library, your listening library, and your viewing library, what are you watching? Are there DVDs that you can watch? Are there uh, videos that you can watch online? That's why I did what networkmarketingpro.com. That's why I put up over a thousand free videos there because I know more people watch YouTube than are watching television. More people watch YouTube than are reading magazines or reading books. So I'm going to respond to that and create some viewing that will encourage people, that will take people in another direction. I'm not saying you have to do it with your beauty library needs to be dominated by Network Marketing Pro, but it wouldn't hurt. There are a lot of things that you can watch that will help you, okay, from great speakers, great people that will inspire you. Another great place to watch and, and be inspired is a, is a website called TED.com, TED.com. Some of the greatest thought leaders in the world with free ideas that you can watch at a moment's notice. Um, it's spectacularly amazing what they do. So your reading library, your listening library, your viewing library, and fourth is attending events. Events that will make you better, events that will develop you personally. Uh, we have a few events inside of Network Marketing Pro. One is GoPro Recruiting Mastery at the end of every year. I'd highly recommend that you attend. It's a celebration of network marketing. It's generic, it's not any company specific, but we have a collection of the top leaders in network marketing. There's over 100 people in the room that make over a million dollars a year in network marketing. People come from all over the world. You should be at that event once a year to fill yourself up. You know, occasionally I have smaller different coaching events that I do, but whether it's that or it's a Anthony Robbins event or it's some um, Carnegie, Dale Carnegie speaking event in, in your local market or something that will make you better, find those things and attend them. Your company convention, I promise you, is going to be filled with great ideas. Your regional events that your company puts on are going to be filled with great ideas. Have that be part of your personal development plan. Because if you will focus on personal development, you'll focus on your growth, you'll focus on developing the skills necessary to become a network marketing professional, you never have to worry about getting lucky for the rest of your life. Everything will be taken care of. Okay? So, I hope you're with me so far. I've covered a lot of content in a short period of time. But I hope you take notes, and the good thing about this program is you can watch over and over and over again until you've got it. But I want this just to be an introduction for you, or a reintroduction for you, to believe in yourself and take this to another level. You deserve it, and the vehicle is there. All you've got to do is get in and drive this vehicle, okay? Um, that's why I call it Formula One. Formula one being, this is the formula, and it's step one, let's go make it happen. Formula one being a car, a vehicle that can go fast, this is what I want you to be able to do. I want you to get in, be comfortable, be encouraged, and start getting progress. All right, next thing I want to talk about is focus and consistency. We live in a distracted world, and network marketing itself is filled with distractions. When you get involved in network marketing, you start to be hearing about other companies and their products, you're going to be hearing about other systems and other people are doing other things. Everybody's got a lot of ideas. What I would encourage you to do when you get involved with your company is put the blinders on and commit that I'm going to be here a year from today and I'm going to commit to the process of becoming better between now and that year. Take things a year at a time, not a day at a time. When I'm, when I'm talking about focus and consistency, of course you're going to take your daily method of operation a day at a time, but focus and consistency is about a year at a time. 
Commit to the next 12 months. Make that happen. Evaluate. Commit again for the next 12 months. Make it happen. Evaluate. That's my strongest encouragement because I see so many people get involved in network marketing and their head's like a swivel. They're looking at everything. They're online. And, and because they're on Facebook, they're seeing all these other network marketing things. Oh, so well, well, let me check out this and let me check out that. If you go check out all those different things all the time, you're going to be off track all the time. Focus where you are. Follow the people in your company that are having the biggest success. Do what they do. And put the blinders on and don't look right and don't look left. Look at what's working and, and commit to becoming better inside of that process. Okay? Next thing is the importance of events. Events are, are just vital in network marketing. You know, I, what I want you to do is commit now to attending all of your major company events. Just decide that you're not going to miss. It changed everything for me when I made the commitment to never missing a company convention. And there were times when I couldn't afford it. I would encourage you at the very beginning, um, you know, when I couldn't afford it, here's what I did. I got creative. It wasn't about the resources that I had. It was about how resourceful I could be. If I didn't have it, I could go sell some product and raise some money. I could go uh, carpool with somebody and get to that event. I could sleep, you know, I could get a roommate and sleep with somebody else at the event. I could stay away from all the restaurants and room service, and I could go to the grocery store and make sandwiches or whatever I had to do. I could clear my calendar, but once I made the commitment to doing it, all the life change that I had in my career happened at major events. So I would encourage you as you're starting your business or restarting it to find out when the next company convention is outside of your hometown and register for it today. Get yourself registered for it. Get your hotel taken care of. Get your airfare taken care of. Decide that you're going to be there no matter what. Make that commitment. Because if you make that commitment, change everything. All right. Next is stories. In network marketing, we are storytellers and very good paid storytellers, very highly paid storytellers. And there's some stories that you need to think about creating as you're starting your business. I just want you to jot these down, okay? Number one is your why network marketing story. So when people ask you, you can tell them, here's why I decided network marketing was for me. Here, my background was this, here's what I didn't like about it, I found network marketing as a solution to being able to do that, and that's why I made the decision. Whatever your story, why you made the decision, but you should be able to tell that in a couple minutes. Not 30 minutes, but a couple minutes. If somebody says, well, why network marketing? You gotta be able to tell them that story. Second is your getting started story. This, this program might be part of your getting started story, where you say, you know, look, I got involved, I got this training program, and I decided to follow what he had to say, and here's what happened. I got started with the biggest package. I got, you know, I made a strong monthly product commitment. I decided to treat it serious. I decided to eliminate the distractions. I decided to make a few sacrifices. I decided to, to, to take a look at what was important for me. I put together a game plan. I, started, I used a, 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 a support and, and a practice approach with my prospects. And here's how it worked, all these different things. So talking about this getting started process is inspiring. And you, get, you need to have the ability to tell that story. So that's your second story. Your third story is your product story. What you took, you use the product, and what happened? You got to create that story, product or service, and how did that product or service um, benefit you? And, and in telling your story, people will see how it will benefit them. Your first thirty day story. You got involved on such and such a date, and here's what happened in my first thirty days. Now, if you've been involved for a while, you've been involved before, or you've been involved and haven't really done anything, and you're really using this program to take it serious, you can create a new first 30-day story. You can say, look, I was involved before, but I didn't really take it seriously, but on such and such a date, I decided to go after it, and here's what happened in, my ne in the next 30 days. So to create that, to, why, why do we tell that story? To inspire people what they can do in their 30 days. So let's make your first 30-day story as powerful as we possibly can make it. Next story is your rank advancement story. You know, I, I got involved, and after this amount of time, I went to this rank. And this amount of time, I went to this rank. And this amount of time, I went to this rank. So your rank advancement story is very important. 
And another story is your success in the group story. So it's not about you. Let me tell you about this person's getting started story. Let me tell you why this person joined network marketing. Let me tell you what happened when this person used the product. Let me tell you what happened when this person that got launched in their first 30 days. Let me tell you what, what happened when this person moved through the ranks. Or you can start talking about multiples of people. But learn to tell stories, because people listen to stories way more than they listen to facts. They remember stories way more than they listen to data and information. They remember the stories. So when you go to an event, what do you remember from an event, typically? There was a story somewhere. And the story makes an impact. You know, you look at a lot of the great books, they're filled with stories. Right? The great programs are filled with stories. So develop your stories. Pay attention to your stories. Work on your stories. And um, become a good storyteller. It's fun to do. And uh, you'll get great results doing it. Next is focus on skills. This is my strongest recommendation. When I decided to become a network marketing professional, it was after three and a half years in network marketing. And I finally just decided, you know what? I'm just going to work on the skills. And I'm going to forget about trying to get lucky, looking for shortcuts, looking for magic systems or whatever. I'm just going to develop the skills. Now, the skills will make a career for you. The skills, you, you could be good and you don't have to worry about being lucky ever again. Now, what do we have that will help you with the skills? We have the memory jogger, ultimate memory jogger workbook. We have the script book. The GoPro book by itself or the audio book will help you so much with the skills, I can't even describe it to you. It will help so much. It's helped hundreds of thousands of people around the world. It will help you. The skills are the real thing. I found out that there's basically three things that you need to do in order to have massive success in network marketing. Number one, you need to have a solid understanding of what it is that we have. The gift that we have of network marketing, being able to be an entrepreneur without all the risk, being able to create leverage through a group of people instead of everything being on you all the time, being able to expand beyond your geography, being able to build a business outside of your hometown without having to go there. I mean, the gift that we have inside of this great profession, network marketing, the understanding of it, once you understand it, you'll do, any, you'll do whatever it takes in order to be able to reap the benefits of it. Two, so not understanding is number one. Two are the skills. You, you've got to develop the skills. If you develop the skills, everything's easy. If you don't develop the skills, you've got to hope, hope and pray that you get lucky. And the skills aren't hard. None of the skills are hard. They're all easy to learn. You have to work at them, but they're all learnable. Okay, so that's number two is the skills. And number three is you gotta face your fears. Your fears of inadequacy, your fears of rejection, your fears of the unknown, um, fears embedded in you from when you were a little kid. And what I found is once understanding and skills fall into place, the fears very small. Until you have a strong understanding, until you have strong skills, the fears are actually pretty significant. It's pretty scary to be able to do. So one is understanding. Two are skills. And three is facing those fears because most of them, not all of them, are an illusion. At least in network marketing. They're an illusion. When they're faced, it's like flipping on a light switch and the darkness disappears. That's what happens. The fears go away when you face them and you turn that light switch on. That's what I want for you. I want you to be able to live a fearless life. I want you to be able to get the results that you're looking for. I want you to understand what it is to have. And I want you to be able to pass it on to other people. All right, so let's summarize Formula One. How to start your network marketing business right. As I talked to you at the beginning of this program, let you know, congratulations, you're, you're the smart one. You're escaping the, the matrix. You're the one walking away from the negative and looking for something more positive. We talked about what do you want? The fact that reasons drive everything. That with strong reasons, it becomes easy. With weak reasons, it becomes a little harder. Getting a clear picture in your mind. Asking you, what are you willing to give up in order to get what you want? As far as time, money, hobbies, recreation, maybe even bad habits. We talked about taking responsibility. Success is up to you. Failure is up to you. Decide to become independent as fast as possible. Find a workout partner to hold you accountable. We talked about expectations. 
that this is a very emotional business, that there's gonna be ups and downs. Life's gonna distract you, you're gonna face rejection, people are gonna quit, things are gonna happen. Your past is either gonna punish you or reward you at the beginning, that's all okay, so long as you know how to deal with it. We talked about how to get involved, committing yourself, the top possible package, a solid month of commitment, introducing yourself to everyone. We talked about the business stuff, tracking expenses, keeping good accounts, saving for taxes, and not spending your network marketing money, at least as a suggestion. We talked about making your list. With the link to the Ultimate Memory Jogger, I hope you use that. Finding those easiest customers, those easiest first distributors. Some invitation basics. We got the script book for you to be able to use, using the support and practice approach as much as you can, at least at the beginning, while you're developing the other skills. And then the launch, proclaiming yourself, treating it like you're opening a restaurant, understanding that it's a race, your grand opening. You wanna get your product story fast, get that product sales story fast, get that new distributor signed up fast. We talked about time management, treating it like a job, 15 minute increments, your daily method of operation, becoming a slave to good habits versus bad habits, being aware of time stealers like TV, the internet, email, and others, whatever else is getting in your way. We talked about personal development. In the end, you only get to make what you are. To have more, you need to become more. You got to develop your reading library, your listening library, your viewing library. You got to attend some positive events. Talked about focus and consistency. Network marketing is filled with distractions. Put those blinders on. Take things one year at a time. We talked about the importance of events. Committing now to attending all your major company events, and I hope you do that as you finish this program. We talked about stories. Your why network marketing story. Your getting started story. Your product story. Your first 30 day story. Your rank advancement story. The success in your group story. And lastly, we talked about Focusing on the skills, because the skills are going to make a career for you. The skills will do everything that you need in this business. It will give you the understanding that we have a better way. It will help you develop a career here, not just a little thing, not just a little few dollars, but career and life skills. You know, the GoPro book will help you do that. I hope this program helped you to do that. Uh, we've given you some tools, hopefully, to be able to do that. Um, I hope that I get to see you at a, some upcoming event. I hope you uh, access NetworkMarketingPro.com, watch those free videos, get encouraged on a regular basis. Um, I hope you encourage your, the people on your team to utilize this training program. If it helped you, I promise you it will help them. And uh, mostly, I want you to know that I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. If you're involved in network marketing and you've watched this program, you've got to this point, without all the distractions of life, I'm proud of you. You're doing something different. You're going against the stream. You're going against the wind. You've decided that there's more to life and you want to live it. And you've gone to a place to hopefully get some answers to be able to create the game plan to start making that happen. So whether you're starting for the very first time or you're restarting and you're ready to re-energize your business, I'm super proud of you. So that's our program. Watch it as many times as you want, over and over and over. And ladies and gentlemen, my wish for all of you is that you decide to become network marketing professionals, that you decide to go pro, because it is a stone cold fact, and we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.